All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our first ever film festival for the Summer Engineering Academies. Um, we're just going to give it just a couple more minutes for a few people, more people to join us and we'll get started shortly. So um, please stand by. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Um, welcome to uh, the UAA Summer Engineering Academy's Videography um, Film Festival. Let me go ahead and stop this share briefly. I'll just proceed. So welcome, my name is Vicki Nakadomo. I am the lead instructor for the videography session for the uh, Summer Engineering Academies. We offered three summer camps for uh, middle school kids this summer for the first time that focused on videography. Uh, the Summer Engineering Academies have been around for quite a while, um, but we kind of wanted to look at a way that we could incorporate communicating through video and film as one of our new camps. So um, we had three sessions, five days long for each one of them, and just shy of 60 students between the three camps. 20 of those students um, really wanted to work a little extra on their videos and have a little extra time on that. So thus we have our end of summer film festival to take a look at those final projects and, um, and enjoy them together. So um, just another quick recap, we, um, during those five days, students had a pretty rushed, um, intense experience of learning the technical and creative side of filmmaking, but also diving into the STEM concepts that they wanted to communicate through film. So we had students as their final projects choose whether they wanted to create an informational uh, STEM activity or poetic documentary final video project. And um, they did everything from planning and writing proposals and scripts to actually filming and doing the final edits on their videos. So we have 18 videos to celebrate tonight um, in those three categories. We'll start out with the STEM activity category, followed by the informational videos and the um, poetic documentaries will be last but not least. We also have, um, the students who have participated this evening will have the opportunity to have their films showcased on our College of Engineering website, as well as our social media, um, which includes Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So we'll be periodically publishing those videos throughout the year. And we'll also be mailing out certificates to those students to appreciate their accomplishments. So without further ado, let's watch some videos. First up, Informational. Our very first video seems appropriate to start with this one is how to use ClipChamp to communicate STEM. So um, it's not always obvious how the um, videography camp fits into the themes of science, technology, engineering, and math, but this filmmaker, Levi, chose to um, make it very clear for us by helping us recognize how film can be used to communicate STEM ideas. He, he not only demonstrated on camera how to do video editing, but also showed us his excellent video editing skills through 
the actual video itself. So I'd like to congratulate Levi and give him the video editor award. Let's watch his film. Hi, my name is Levi and I'm going to tell you why videography is so important to people in STEM. Several engineers design buildings, bridges, and boats. Mechanical engineers design things with moving parts like microwaves, turbines, and cars. When engineers discover and invent new technology, they need a place to tell the world their new discoveries. One way they can do that is in video. Today I'm going to show you one specific videography site that can be used for engineers. Clipchimp is a site which can be used for engineers and for photographers and for everyone. One great thing about Clipchimp is that it's free and it's online, so you don't need special equipment which is great because most people don't like paying for apps. It is nice because it has all the things you need to make a very good video in such a short amount of time. It has everything from music, transitions, and many more things we'll explore right now. The first thing we'll explore is how to make a new project in Clipchamp. First, you will look at the left side of the screen and click on the purple whole new video. Then you will choose the format. I suggest you choose the widescreen. Then you will go into a blank project. You can either get the pictures or videos off your computer and drag them into your media library. Or you can browse the files you already have on your computer. When you have the pictures in the media library, you drag them into the timeline, which is a rectangle at the bottom of the screen. Once you've done that, you've started your video. You can leave it how it is, or add music, transitions, and edit the video. If you want to edit the video, all the edits are on the left sidebar. If you play around with the tools of Clipchamp, you will learn how to share your discoveries in video for other people to see and learn from. Well done, Levi. And I thought I'd also mention that you are um, welcome to, if you're watching this streaming from the College of Engineering website, you're welcome to hop over, follow the, the link to go straight to our YouTube live stream where you can always, of course, chat and um, send encouraging words to filmmakers in the chat box on the side. All right, well, let's move on to our next film, How Wingsuits Work by Deanna. Um, when you direct and produce a film, you there's a lot of complicated bells and whistles involved, everything again from like planning the footage and writing the script to actually editing. And when you're a team of one, then you have to do it all. And I just thought Deanna's film was a really great example of mastery of both script writing and planning and also the execution of the um, editing itself. And so I wanted to congratulate Deanna and give her the director's award for her excellent work in directing the entire short video from start to end. So let's enjoy her video and learn how wing seats work. If you're like most people, you've probably always wanted to fly, whether to be like your favorite superhero or just for fun. Well, did you know that you can? Wingsuits, special suits designed to make people fly, might be what you're looking for. With these suits, you're able to spread your arms and soar. But the question is, how? In order to answer that, we must look at the science of the suit and how it works. 
The first thing you should notice is that the wingsuit resembles a specific animal, the flying squirrel. In fact, the first wingsuit models were named squirrel suits due to their similarities. As you can see, both the wingsuit and the flying squirrel both have webbed flaps that help them glide through the air. Wingsuits work because the force of the air it opposes inflates the flaps between the arms and legs. This helps the airfoil, the cross-section shape that produces an aerodynamic force, stay up during the flight. The use of airfoil can be found in planes and most things that fly. This means that the flyer doesn't have to keep the shape of the wings through force alone, but also doesn't suffer limited movement due to stiff wing structure. This allows them to glide through the air like a bird. The suit straps securely to the flyer's body without blocking the main chute or the emergency handles on the chest that deploy the reserve parachute. To soar forward through the air, a wingsuit flyer must depend on the glide ratio, the thing that determines how far a gliding object can travel from a particular altitude. As weight pulls the flyer down, lift allows the flyer to glide horizontally through the air. So, there you have it. Now that you know how wingsuits work, maybe now you can check something off your bucket list. Good job, Deanna. And I definitely want to add that to my bucket list now. All right, let's move on to Jasper's video. So you want to learn how to code. So when I think about learning to code, um, maybe some stereotypes come to mind of, you know, kind of some intense focus and some really complicated concepts. But, you know, Jasper kind of brings a new spin to this topic. And so with Jasper's lighthearted approach to learning how to code, I couldn't help but say we need to give the award, the Comedian Award to Jasper for the lighthearted approach to teaching us how to code. Let's enjoy this short video. Hi, hello. My name is Jasper, and today I am going to show you how to code a game on Scratch. In fact, this game right here. Now, you're probably thinking, I want to code AI or something along those lines. Well, if you think you can do that, well, this is not the class for you. So, let's get started. Step one, get a Scratch account. Step two, choose who you want to star in it. Your dog? Great. Now, take a good picture of your dog. Now, not that. Or a, that. Is that even a dog? Oh, well, there. that's a good photo. Step three, start a new scratch project. Okay, so delete that cat. We do not like cats, do we? Fine, maybe, maybe we do. Now, create a sprite by going here and finding that picture of your dog. See, now you have it. Now um, let's add uh, this code to your dog so that you can move it. Now, this part of the code means that it will execute the actions in here forever. Now this part means that if you're pressing the up arrow key, something will happen. And this part means that that something is the dog will move up. And the same thing for each of the different little parts that the dog can not only move up, it can move down and left and maybe even right. Pretty much, that's it. Now, um, you can see that this is obviously nothing like this, but you know, it'll work for our purposes, right? Now this game, it's kind of boring, so let's give the dog something to go after. Oh, like a bone. You know, that's a novel idea. Yeah, no, not a chicken bone. Oh, well, that, I guess that works. Yeah, let's go with that. Create a sprite and do this. The bone should up. Now, add this cone to the bone. Now, uh, code to the bone. Now, uh, like I said before, this part means that it will go on forever. This part means that if it is touching the dog, something will happen. And the something is three things, actually. It'll hide and disappear. It will play the sound bark which I actually got by rec hitting record when the mailman came by. And then this means that it will also happen to say, you win. 
that's all jolly good, but I mean, you can win now, but I mean, this, I mean, this game, it's still kind of boring. So let's create a new sprite and do it by clicking that button right there that I just clicked and creating a red shape or whichever color your local pound has adopted, right? And, uh, add, and uh, you see, this is how you do it. You can move it around. It doesn't have to be a square, it can be a circle, right? But for my purposes, it is a square. Now, yeah. Now, um, go here and add this code. This code is actually pretty similar. There's a forever loop, like in the other two codes. Put this block inside, as in the bones code. But inside of that, there is a block that will make it say, you lose, instead of disappearing and making it say, you win. Well, congrats. You just created your first code. And if this is not your first code, well, you just made another code, so who cares? <laughs> no, it, no, it's still good. But now, um, it's time for me to leave. But um, I think a certain dog can keep you entertained. of Jasper. A lot of times videos that involve animals require some kind of disclaimer that says uh, no animals were harmed in making this film, but I think yours could have benefited from a statement that says no mailmen were harmed in the making of this film. All right, let's move on to magnetics. So, uh, you know, this, this next video dives into analyzing and and watching the behavior of magnets, but also dives really deep into like the atomic level of the physics that makes magnets behave the way they do. And I found it interesting and also really informative and just really in depth as far as the content is concerned. And so it is our honor to give the um, special award of future professor to Isabel. Well, let's watch and learn about magnets. You've very likely interacted with magnets before, but do you know what causes them to be attracted to other magnetic objects? Why some materials are magnetic, but many aren't? My name is Isabel, and this video will explain all that. Every magnet has both a north and south magnetic pole. If you were to cut a magnet in half along the division of the poles, the two pieces would each have their own north and south pole, and so on. When two or more magnets are brought close to each other, their magnetic fields interact. Opposite poles, north and south and south and north, attract, while similar poles, south and south or north and north, are repelled. But why? When electrons spin around the nucleus of an atom, of which everything is made out of, the atom can become a tiny magnet complete with poles and a magnetic field. So why aren't all materials magnetic? Either the electrons are not arranged in such a way as for the atom to have magnetic properties, or the north and south poles of the object's atoms are all pointing in different directions, and so the overall object is not a magnet. At least one of these are the case in non-magnetic materials such as wood, plastic, and many more. In many cases, parts of the object, called magnetic domains, have the same magnetic orientation, but the individual domains are still in different directions. However, some types of material like this can be magnetized if they are put on a magnetic field, which causes all the domains to align and therefore make the object a magnet. Materials that are capable of this transformation are called ferromagnetic materials. This conversion can be temporary, such as when a magnet attracts a paper clip, which can then collect other objects so long as it remains touching the pole of the magnet, or permanent such as stroking an iron nail with a bar magnet, in which case the former will become an at least long-lasting magnet. Permanent magnets can be demagnetized if they are dropped or heated, which will cause the magnetic domains to unalign again. Earth actually has its own magnetic field and poles as well. Imagine a bar magnet with north and south ends going straight through the Earth. Because of Earth's slight tilt, the magnetic poles are in slightly different places than the geological poles. These poles are what allows compasses to work. So if opposite poles attract, why don't compasses point south instead of north? 
while the magnetic North Pole is actually at the bottom of the Earth, near the geological South Pole. The names were switched to avoid confusion. The effects of magnetics are all around us, from helping cause the northern lights to innovative use in engineering, such as in megalotrains. So, next time you use a compass or refrigerator magnet, think about the processes that have to happen to make them work. Great job, Professor Isabel. All right. Now, um, our film festival today is being conducted, as we all are aware, online, virtually, as are a lot of things these days. But even pre-pandemic, there were a lot of really neat resources um, that are just expanding our access and opportunities to learn and um, engage with STEM and science and technology engineering and math. So this next video, in this next video, Joseph shows us a demonstration about how we can learn about satellites using this program that's uh, using Kerbal Space Program. Um, and I just think that it was really neat how Joseph was able to use this technology to show us um, what we can use, uh, how we can explore future careers in STEM, both in this world and out of this world. And so we issue Joseph the Award of Future Astronauts. astronaut Joseph or any other careers you choose. All right. Well, our next up, um, another sort of a sciencey topic. When you hear the word physics, you may be tempted to think about like thick textbooks or really intense lectures and um, kind of some technical concepts. But we have a filmmaker this summer who decided to introduce us to physics concepts with the fun activity or the fun tricks and action of a um, of the Diablo, which you will see featured briefly. I don't know how to describe it other than seeing it yourself in just a moment. And so in honor of the fun introduction and fun way that he introduces us to physics, we give Jackson the Fun Physics Award.
excellent work, Jackson, as well as cameraman mom. Good work and good job recruiting your family to help with that project. All right. The next video we're going to watch is called Trains, Planes, and Automobiles. When you put those three words together, it makes me want to travel. But filmmaker Dominic, when he sees those three words together, thinks of the words engineering. And so um, Dominic had an impressive amount of research that went into this project and learning about all different types of the history of trains and planes and automobiles. And so for Dominic, we give you the award, the research award. Well done. Today we'll be talking about the three top modes of transportation, planes, trains, and automobiles. First, the plane. I could go into blah, 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 but I was told to keep this video around three minutes long. So the first plane ever built was the Wright Flyer. It took its first flight on December 17th, 1903. This plane was built by Wilbur and Orville Wright, AKA the Wright brothers. And the best selling plane in history is the Boeing 737. Over 14,000 of these have been built. Next, the train. First train ever built was built in 1813 by inventor George Stephenson. The best selling train, nobody knows, but the most trains ever sold from a company was from the American Locomotive Company with about 75,000 built. So basically, People have built a lot of things and they affect everyone. Like if it weren't for the Wright brothers, it would take like 12 days just to get to Hawaii. And if it weren't for Carl Benz, it would take a long time just to get to your grandparents. Finally, automobiles. The first automobile built was the Benz Patent Motor Wagon, built in the year 1885 by German inventor Carl Benz. The best-selling car in the world is the Volkswagen Beetle, with over 44 million built in 2016. That is almost 7% of the human population. Bye. Bye. Good work, Dominic. That was a lot of information uh, crammed into three minutes, blah, 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 right? Okay, good job. Now, the, this is the final video in our first category, the first category being informational videos. And then we have two more categories after this. Um, this video is called Ways to Help Stop Climate Change by, Kat and it's by Katrina. Um, all the informational videos are designed to present the audience with information. But what stands out at me about this one is that it's not just presenting us with information, it's also challenging us to make some kind of change, that we can be some kind of change. And so we give Katrina the call to action award to um, appreciate the way that she's used her video to call people to action. Let's watch and learn how we can help stop climate change.
watch out, Katrina. And I'm going to watch that again later and see if I can um, take some of those tips and implement them in my own life. So thank you for that call to action. We have two more categories of videos ahead of us. Um, STEM activity is our next video. As I mentioned earlier, STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. And so students who chose this type of video got to show us on camera how to actually um, do one of these activities. They got to choose and write and demonstrate their own STEM activity. Now, it being um, summertime in Alaska, I thought one thing that was interesting about our very first STEM activity is that our filmmaker, Rakat, chose to, it shows a very Alaska summer concept and decided to show us the science behind it while also turning it into an activity while he teaches us how to build a beach fire. And um, I think interesting that, um, like you can really tell when you're watching this video that all of the footage was filmed original, um, original footage by Mercad for this project. And so we give him the award of best original footage. Also very deliberate implementation of the shots and angles we studied in class. And I just thought it turned out really nice. So well done. Fire is a chemical reaction in which energy in the form of heat is released. Three things are required before combustion or fire can happen. You need an ignition source, oxygen, and fuel. Oxygen is a gas necessary for something to burn. Fire would be impossible without it. When the oxygen is gone, so is the flame. The materials you need to make a fire are sticks, rocks, a shovel, a lighter, beach grass, driftwood, a pocket knife, a container full of water, and food. Choose a site that is flat and away from people and property. Gather sticks and dry grass for fuel. Start by digging a hole into the sand about one foot in diameter. Dig until the san sand is damp. Place rocks around your fire pit. This keeps the fire from becoming out of control. Layer the stick straight across and lay some more straight going the other way until it reaches the top of your hole like a log cabin. This allows the fire to grow from the beach grass to the larger pieces of wood. Put beach grass in the middle and cap it off with a layer of driftwood like the roof to the log cabin. Stick your lighter into the middle of your pit so the lighter is in the spot where your beach grass is. Carve a stick until the top is like a spearhead. Attach a marshmallow to the spear and cook until it is done. Put it on a graham cracker with some chocolate and enjoy. Put the fire out with some water. Cover the fire with sand because some of the embers might not be completely put out. When something is being burned, that is called combustion. Combustion is used to power rockets, the burning of wood, to heat our home's fireworks, to light up a New Year's sky, and it also powers the engines of vehicles. Um, I definitely want to be eating a s'more now. I might need to toss this popcorn and go make a s'more instead. Well done. Oh no. Ah, well, there's your award, Armando. I guess you get to see it. I don't know what happened to the animation on this slide. All right. Well, the next video is called Build a Cardboard and Building a How to Build a Cardboard Excavator. Um, you might see the title cardboard and think you might be watching a video that's just a scale model or something like that. But the honest truth is the engineering involved in this video is quite impressive. Um, in this video, Armando is going to not only show us the in integrate um, hydraulics into the video or into the model, 
He's also going to share some fun facts throughout. And he's also going to um, use some diagrams and models to show us how it actually works. So very educational, making this video a true feat of mechanical engineering. Let's watch. Very impressive. All right. Well, taking us over to a different discipline of engineering, over in the world of civil engineering, our filmmaker Hayden introduced us to the concept of making a bridge out of popsicle sticks. Um, but not just exploring how to make the bridge, but also going back and talking about what it is to be a civil engineer, as well as what shape is the strongest, which um, some of you may know is the triangle, and you'll get to see that demonstrated in this video. So to Hayden, we would like to award for mastery and demonstration of civil engineering concepts, the Civil Engineering Award. Let's watch how to make a bridge. Hello, my name is Hayden, and today we'll be talking about one element of STEM, engineering. There are a lot of different types of engineers, but today we will be civil engineers. Civil engineers design roads, bridges, airports, utilities, and much more. Today I'm going to teach you about building a strong bridge. To make a strong bridge, you need to have a strong structure, and triangles are the strongest shape, so we will be using those. We will make it out of things you might find around your house. For the bridge itself, you will need about 71 popsicle sticks and a hot glue gun. 
If you would like to decorate it, you may use anything around your house. Paint, string, beads, pipe cleaners, etc. First, you'll need to warm up the glue gun. Next, place one triangle on your surface and place a dot of glue at each point. Then add one popsicle stick to the top of the triangle and another to the other side of the triangle, making an upside down triangle. Keep adding popsicle sticks until you have four right side up triangles and three upside down triangles. Make sure you're adding glue to each point. To make sure the sides are stable, you will need to add additional popsicle sticks in the middle of each triangle, like so. Then flip over and repeat. You will need to repeat this step once more for the other side. For the next step, place four popsicle sticks out in a square formation. Keep adding three popsicle sticks to keep making squares until you have four squares. You will need to add some more popsicle stick to make it more stable. You'll be adding sticks to the bottom left corner and the top right corner. So you should have two popsicle sticks per square. Don't forget to be adding glue to every stick. For the third step, we'll be gluing all the sides together. Place the bottom on your surface and take the sides and lean them on each other. You may have to hold it for a minute. You can also use zip ties or string to hold it until you glue it. Glue the bottom side first and then the top. If you did use string or zip ties, you can cut them off now. Here was a way to make a strong popsicle stick bridge you can decorate any way you like. We learned how civil engineers plan out bridges and how they stand up. Thanks for watching! Excellent work, Hayden. I also really like your closing at the end there. Um, very good teaching practices to always go back and remind your audience what you just learned. Very nice. All right. Uh, this next video is how to make a fully 3D printable wind-up car by Kyla. Now, when we're making these um, STEM activity videos or they're kind of similar in style to a DIY video, um, in the world of videography, that what that requires is a little bit different than other types of videos. And Kyla really demonstrated a mastery of the close-up shot that's required in these activity videos. And so for the mastery of that concept, we give Kyla the best close-ups award. And let's see those close-ups and how that they help us in figuring out how to assemble a 3D purple wind-up car.
done, Kyla. All right. And another STEM activity, making a catchboy out of cardboard. Now, a lot of times, the STEM activities that we're watching uh, have already gone through a process of designing. And so they, that's their final product. And then te they teach us how to create that final product. Um, what's really unique about this video and what I really appreciate about this video is that Demian walks us through the process of how he designed this cat toy from scratch to the final product. And I think it's a really true real world engineering experience that he relays through this video. And so we would like to give Demian the award of engineering design. Well done. Let's see how he designed this cat toy. Hi, my name is Demian. Today I'll be telling you how to make a fun and simple cat toy. I knew how I wanted to make a cat toy that was easy to make and fun for cats to play with. The problem was that I didn't know what kind of cat toy I wanted to make. I looked at different cat toys to get an idea of current designs. To develop a possible solution, I began by thinking about the size of the cat toy and decided that it should be something small my cats could play with. I wanted to add catnip and cat treats inside the toy, so I knew it had to be hollow inside. At first, I wanted an octagonal shape because I thought it would roll better, but when I researched how to make it, I decided on a square because I thought it was a simpler design. The sides would have to have holes in them to let the smell come out. I designed my cat toy by drawing it on a cardboard. Starting with a size of 2 and a fourth inches, I decided to scale it down to 1 and a half inches. I built a prototype and put catnip in it. During the testing phase, the catnip fell out of the holes. Catnip falling out of the holes was not a good thing, so I came up with three possible solutions. One, a small cloth back. Two, smaller holes. Or three, just use big cat treats. I am going to try using a small cloth back. Eventually, my cat destroyed the box, which was not a problem because that meant that the holes released in catnip smell were working. Let's begin making the cat toy. First, get or cut a piece of cardboard that is six inches by four and a half inches. Get a standard hole puncher, a pair of scissors, a ruler, a pen and pencil, cat treats and or catnip, and a hot glue gun. Next, turn the cardboard lengthwise. Cut a one and a half inch by one and a half inch square out of each of the left corners and cut a one and a half inch by three inch rectangle out of each of the right corners. Between the ends of the cardboard, lengthwise and widthwise, draw lines at one and a half inch intervals. It is optional to make shallow cuts along these lines to help it better. Use a standard hole punch to make holes in each of the sides. Now fold along the lines to make a square. Using the hot glue gun, glue all the edges together except for the top square. Put some cat treats and or catnip in it. Pull down the top square and hot glue it along these edges to hold it in place. Your cat toy is now complete. Coloring or painting your cat toy is optional. Very nice work. I don't have a cat, but I have a dog. I might try to make one of those for my dog, but she might just eat the whole thing. So nice work with your uh, cat toy and walking us through the entire engineering design process. Next up, we have a video called How to, How to Use Tinkercad, and it was created by our filmmaker, Nora. Um, I think this film is a really interesting uh, demonstration of creativity on a couple of different levels. The creativity involved in the 3D modeling of um, the, the 3D printed bowl that you'll see demonstrated shortly, as well as the creativity used in the production of this video. Um, you'll notice that everything from the different shots and angles used and the different media types involved, um, Nora has demonstrated a lot of creativity in this film. And so we give to her the Creator Award. Nice work. Hi there, my name is Nora, and I'm going to be showing you how to use the 3D printing software Tinkercad. 
On Tinkercad, you can create your own designs and 3D print them. I'm also going to be talking about 3D printers and how they are being used today. One of the many types of 3D printing that is used in the medical device field is bioprinting. Instead of printing with plastic or metal, bioprinters use pipette to layer living cells to create organs and other living tissue. SpaceX is also hoping to be able to bring 3D printers to space, so that if they need a new part, they can print it out instead of shipping it to them when it takes time and money. So I have Tinkercad pulled up on my computer. I'm going to be designing a little bowl. And I will also be showing you how to overall just use the Tinkercad software. So let's get started. On Tinkercad, you have a sidebar of all of your basic shapes that you can use. I'm going to start with a half circle. You click, hold, and drag the object from the bar to your building plate. And I'm going to turn mine over like this. So now I have a start to my basic bowl. By pressing here, you can bend and warp your shape. I'm just going to make mine a little bit taller. Now I need to cut out the middle of my bowl. What I'm going to do is duplicate my current shape by pressing this button here. Now I have two half circles. Now I'm going to press this button to make it whole. I'm also going to adjust the size of the shape from 20 millimeters to 18 millimeters. Now I'm going to move my shape inside of my bowl. I'm also going to raise it up a little bit by using this button. I'm going to center it. Keep it selected and press down on the shift button on your keyboard. Now you will have a simple basic bowl. I'm just going to add a little more decoration to my bowl like this. You can also change the color by pressing this button. Alright, it's ready to be 3D printed. So, this is it and I have to admit I think it turned out really cool. Excellent work, Nora. Very nice. All right, this next video is how to build a catapult with Emma. So with these STEM activities, uh, it's very important for uh, our filmmakers to be good communicators and to be able to walk us through step by step and make sure that we know what materials to have prepared. And I think uh, between the script and the materials and the structure of this video, Emma did a really wonderful job making sure that we all knew as the audience what to expect and how to, um, how to actually do the activity she's teaching us. And so for Emma, we award her the Best Instruction Award. My name is Emma, and as an example of mechanical engineering, this video will be a how to make your very own catapult. First use the pair of scissors to make two notches on either side of two big popsicle sticks. Stack the remaining eight popsicle sticks one on top of the other and wind a rubber band around each end of the stack. Next, take the two notch sticks and wind a rubber band around the notched end.
push one of the sticks into the stack when, with one stick under it. and push the popsicle stick stack closer to the notches. Use the hot glue to attach the bottle cap to the stick. And then have fun shooting pom-poms everywhere. Excellent work, Emma. All right, and um, we just have three videos left of our showcase. Um, the next video is the final video in our STEM activity category. And that is how to make a Lego Nerf crossbow by Heinrich. Now, designing and developing and building any kind of machine is a complicated but fun process. And Heinrich took it to a different level with Legos. And also in the midst of a camp where you have to learn a technical and creative filmmaking side, plus be kind of figuring out a script and everything. Um, Heinrich was also trying to juggle designing and creating this design for his Lego Nerf crossbow. So I was just really impressed with the engineering that was happening um, in a, quite a condensed time frame. And so for Heinrich, we award him the Lego Engineer Award. Let's watch. Hello and welcome to a tutorial on how to make a Nerf crossbow using Lego. The design for this build is very complicated but easy to make. The science behind how it works is pretty cool. Its rubber bands, when pulled back, store potential energy and when the trigger mechanism is pulled down it becomes kinetic energy which propels a dart. Here are the supplies you will need to build your crossbow and with that Let's get to work. Your final build should look like this. How it works is you pull the string back, insert a dart in the loading bay, and then pull the trigger down. Hope you enjoyed this video. Try to make your own custom modification to this design. You can use longer arms or shorter bands to get more power, or you can use different pieces to make your own design. Thanks for watching. 
excellent work. Between the last two videos, I could have a catapult and a crossbow going on here. Pretty exciting. All right, well, good job to all those students who made STEM activity videos. Our final category with only two videos in it is uh, the poetic documentary video. And for this video, it's um, like, as, a, as the title implies, it's a little bit more poetic and creative in nature, often driven by a poem or an essay and um, a lot of very, beautiful visuals. So the first video we're going to watch is Humans Are Destroying the Earth by Clara. Unfortunately, sometimes when we are um, learning about science topics, we learn about some um, unfortunate circumstances and behaviors and, and habits and effects that we as humans have um, created around us. Uh, one thing that Clara, as the filmmaker behind this video, um, does in this video you're about to see is um, she she kind of she recognizes and acknowledges all of that, but also gives it a bit of hope. And so I really appreciate that, um, and I appreciate the honesty and kind of like the looking inwards as humankind. And so we are giving the award, the introspection award, to Clara for kind of taking that difficult look inward as humans at um, what role and responsibilities we have. So let's watch. Uh, we're destroying the earth and the hope that comes with possibly saving that. Animals have been on earth for over 700 million years. Humans have only been here for 200,000. So animals have been here 3,500 times longer than us. We have been here for so little time compared to animals, and look what we've done to them. We have thrown trash in the ocean, started wildfires that burn animals' habitats. We've cut down whole forests just to make room for roads and factories, produce more smoke that pollutes the air, and we've drilled holes in the ice for oil, burned fuel, cause climate change that is making Arctic animals become endangered. People are just going about their days like nothing is wrong. But in the next 50 years, so many animals are predicted to go extinct that it will take at least 3 million years for Earth to recover. People think that humans are the wisest living things on Earth. Sure, we've figured out a way to fly and explore other planets and make clever machines, domesticate animals, but we've also begun slowly killing the Earth. It is said that in 50 to 100 years, Earth will become nearly inhabitable. We might find a way to adapt, but it won't be nearly as good as the life we have here now. So maybe animals are the smart ones. They took care of our birth where we didn't. That being said, we can still turn this around. If we all save energy, recycle, reuse, do everything else we can, we just might be able to save our home. Excellent work, Clara. And I do like the positivity you ended with and that you might just still be able to do something. Um, reminds me of the other video we watched earlier um, with the 10 tips we can all start implementing. And our final video for today is Remember Engineering by Benjamin. So um, I hope that by the end of this film festival, you've recognized the diversity of the different videos we've watched and how many different topics there were that fell under the umbrella of science, technology, engineering, and math. And so I, I think Benjamin's video does a really nice job showcasing for us that and kind of reinforcing how broad and wide the world of engineering is and also inspiring us to potentially consider futures in engineering and what types of um, what our roles could potentially be in engineering. So I, we give Benjamin the Engineering Inspiration Award as I find this video to be very motivating. Um, and I hope a lot of the youth out there watching this also take the message to heart and think, hey, maybe engineering's for me. 
Let's watch. Look around you. What do you see? You might see a house or a car. You may see a device. All of these things are created by engineers. You may not think about it, but engineering is used in so many ways. Everyday items are designed specifically to support your needs. Engineers put hard labor into making things for our planet and our people. Fridges, cars, bridges, computers, and even skyscrapers were planned and designed by people among us. Engineers have spent their lives making the world a better place. The foundation of our survival is in the hands of engineers. Their hard work that they do every day should be appreciated. Mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, civil engineers, geospatial engineers, and technological engineers play such an important role, we would crumble without them. So appreciate and acknowledge engineering, because after all, everyone is an engineer in their own way. Excellent work, Benjamin. And that actually concludes our first ever film festival for um, at the conclusion of our Summer Engineering Academy Videography Camp. I do want to remind you all that these videos will be periodically published throughout the year on our website, as well as our social media, which you can all see listed on the screen there. Um, so please like and follow our Facebook, Instagram, YouTube channel, um, and stay tuned. You might see one of your videos pop up at some point during this, um, this school year. So thank you again. It's been a pleasure working with each one of you students, and I'm so glad we got to come together tonight to celebrate these films. And um, I think I have a, a campfire to make and a catapult to launch and a Nerf gun to make and some popcorn to eat. So um, thank you all again, and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Keep up your great videography skills.